Shakespeare once said, it is a wise father who knows his own child. With that in mind, we can say the same for Joss Verstappen. The fearless Dutchman 49 competed in 107 Formula One races between 1994 and 2003. Despite his racing heritage, Joss is now more recognized as Max Verstappen's father. He is also the second most successful Grand Prix driver to emerge from Holland. So in today's video, we are going to talk about how Joss turned Max into a racing machine and a world champion. So stay tuned till the end of the video to learn more. Max's Formula 1 career began when he was 17 years old. Joss comes and goes through Max's racing weekends. For example, he may accompany him for a bite to eat while attempting not to intrude. But as previously said, he understands the inner workings of his son's mind and can therefore give insight into the keenest and fiercest championship struggle since Hamilton and Fernando Alonso's mutual self-destruction as McLaren teammates in 2007. I never speak to Lewis, says Joss. He doesn't need to speak to me. I'm nothing to him. I respect him as a driver, but the rest, nothing. Max and Lewis only speak on the podium, very little. When I see Max with other drivers, I think they get on very well, but with Lewis, nothing. Lewis is in his own world. Verstappen, who is still just 24, is both one of the F1's present bright lights and a driver who may keep that status long into the 2030s. He came as a prodigy in 2015. He has unbelievable speed, Red Bull's motorsport advisor Helmut Marko said at the time. He is very mature for his age and he is a hard worker. He has all the ingredients you need to be an absolute champion. Max made his Formula 1 debut after just one year of automobile racing, progressing from karts to European Formula 3. His ascension to the top seemed to have been quick, but it wasn't. He began his journey when he was four years old. Verstappen's brilliant karting resume, extremely successful rookie F3 season, and numerous Grand Prix victories further show that his skill is such that this has come quite easily. Verstappen's schooling was unique and difficult. However, it began with a typical scenario of a child who was captivated by cars, but was restricted by somewhat hesitant parents. Verstappen began riding quad bikes when he was just two years old. When he was four years old, he witnessed younger buddy karting and asked his father if he could have one. Joss objected, but persistent pleading and a few tears got his mother on board and his father ultimately caved, putting Max in a cart for the first time at four and a half years old. It was a gank. It was on the rental circuit. It was with a very small go-kart, Joss remembers, in a 2020 Red Bull interview. We still have it. It's hanging in the shop where we sell all the merchandise. But I remember after a few laps, he did the whole track flat out. And because of the vibration of the cart, the carburetor was falling off at the time. We did it for one day and then immediately bought him a bigger go-kart. Max won his first race at the age of seven. He was a champion in Belgium and the Netherlands when he was nine years old, and he would win additional domestic championships over the next several years. By the age of 13, he would won a hat-trick of WSK championships in his debut year in Europe and play second in the CIK FIA World Cup behind future Red Bull teammate Alex Albon. By 16, his last year in karting and entry into the adult divisions, he was world and European champion in the discipline's two most competitive and professional classes. Max has an extraordinary mastery of the vehicle, said Verstappen's CRG team boss Giancarlo Tanini to T-Kart magazine in 2010. Few racers are able to make the difference in the first two laps of a race. He is one of them. Don't be, don't beat yourself up. I know what you're thinking. Not everyone can have a life like that of Max Verstappen. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to support us. Thank you. Between that first ever karting outing and Max's final world championship success, Joss Verstappen threw everything at his son's career. He prepared his chassis and engines during the day in his workshop while Max was at school and they would test two or three times a week. They drive upwards of 100,000 kilometers a year with each other in a van across the Netherlands, Belgium and beyond. We knew exactly which engine was the best and knew what carburetors were richer, so everything was sorted, Joss says. I knew exactly which engine we had to use and things like that. And of course, Max had to set up the carburetors for that. That's a feeling a driver needs to have. And I think he was very good at it. He was very precise on what he liked to have in his car. This education was better received by Max than his school. Especially when you start driving internationally, it becomes quite difficult to keep up to speed with school, says Max. From when I was like 11, 12 years old, it became quite tricky. I'm not the person who likes to work on the engine. My dad really enjoys that. I always love driving more, but I think it's really important that you understand what's going on. I was always involved, looking at what my dad was doing and understanding what he was doing, but I never had that feeling of doing it myself. Max was introduced to this manner of functioning throughout his karting apprenticeship. 
The Verstappen collaborated with the PEX racing team, a CRG client, to operate out of their awning, but the father and son team was still in command of their own gear. Joss would continue to prepare the engines on his own dyno. I don't think many people had the guidance from a very young age like I had, reflects Max. They catch up, they learn a lot, but from a very young age, I just learned a lot straight away. This went beyond Joss's insistence that his kids comprehend the technical aspect. The focus was driving. Joss was keen to ensure Max became a better driver than him, despite never reaching the heights he aspired for in F1. Some familiar sounding incidents come from this period in the Verstappen's life, such as Joss sending Max out without asking him to change specific things on the card to enhance his feedback or continuing to test even when the rain hit and most people packed up and went home. However, there were alternatives. Even in races, I told him because he was winning so easily, for example, that he couldn't overtake in a certain corner or certain part of the track, so he had to find different spots to do that. It was just to make it more difficult for him to find other ways to overtake or not. Max was instructed to learn by doing, to find out his own boundaries while also understanding where the cart might be faster. He was also urged not to lie. If he did not see a change, he should say so, and he believed in the process. Just reflects on the lessons he tried to impart to his son in a simple way. As a father, you always want to help your son as best as possible. I tried to push him in the right direction. As F1 saw in 2020, a more mature Max was able to deal with the disappointment of not competing for the World Championship with humor and a comfortable demeanor. In an interview with The Race, he even joked that it was a lot worse on his father. Max's method of dealing with expectations and getting the best out of himself for as long as he can remember has been to shrug off disappointments and not get worked up about things, to avoid pressure from accumulating in the first place. That bothered Joss. Max acknowledges that my dad sometimes thought I was too relaxed, too easygoing, particularly when he was younger. Joss concurs. He claims it was all very easy for him, which he interprets as Max not caring enough at times. The best illustration of this is when Joss left Max at a gas station. Verstappen recalls the 2012 CRK FIA KZ2 World Cup as one of the easiest weekends of my career. He overcame a burnt clutch in qualifying and a 10th place start in the pre-final to win and earn the pole for the main race, but was knocked out on the second lap after colliding with a competitor he was eagerly attempting to repass. It was a bit stupid and unnecessary, Max admits, so I crashed, no world championship. These are unsettling tales, particularly when the notion is made that the aims justify the methods. In the context of competitiveness, it displays a severe parenting approach, but the younger Verstappen nearly always smiles when he recalls such experiences, and he feels he is unquestionably a better driver as a result. After all, it was the driving reason behind even Joss's most strange or dubious methods, influence Max as much as possible while making him better than his father. He uses his head more, and his driving style is more fluent, is Joss's appraisal. That goal has been realized. Max Verstappen has developed into a quick, instinctive driver with remarkable flexibility, aggressiveness, and with each passing season, more maturity and better judgment. He is an excellent example of how a driver's ability are determined by both nature and upbringing. Do you believe Joss should have taken a gentler approach with his son? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so they don't miss any of our incredible videos. Keep an eye out for the next video. Bye for now.